Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the June 6th, 2019 meeting of the Yellow Springs Planning Commission. Uh, I'm going to call the meeting to order, and we'll start with uh, calling the roll, please. Yes, Stoughton. Here. Stout. Here. McQueen. Here. Blood. Here. Janelle. Here. Also present, Village Solicitor Chris Connor and Village Planning and Zoning Administrator Denise Swearer. And we have Johnny Burns present, Public Works Director. Okay, I'm going to go on to a uh, review of the agenda. We might uh, rearrange things a little bit from what is on the agenda for the sake of uh, making the most efficient uses of people's time. So, for example, on the public hearings, I think we'll do uh, the very the last one first, uh, 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 chapter uh, 1278.06 on quorums. And then after that, uh, Marianne and Ted can recuse themselves because all the others have to do with uh, uh, transient guest logic. And so you just take off after that one first. You want to hang around and talk about something. We'll do that at the very end. We'll do, we'll do those, do those at the very end. Oh, you're moving everything. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. And then I think we'll also try to do the stuff that's in the old business, the stuff that particularly Johnny wants to talk to. We're going to move that up early so that we can get you out of here at a reasonable amount of time as well. So, so bear with us. We'll do the review of the minutes, and then we'll get on to things. So any questions about the agenda? Hopefully that's sort of clear. Uh, okay, uh, we have two sets of minutes to go over. The first was from the uh, regular meeting of May 13th, 2019. Uh, any questions or clarifications or corrections on page one? I think are we doing the May 5th meeting first? Uh, well, I'm just doing it in the order that appeared here, May 13th. Okay, mine appears to be Yeah, we're just uh, Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, so any, any corrections or changes on page one? Yeah, the date, which I got around your yes. Page two. Page three. Or page four. Okay, I move that we accept the minutes from Monday, May 13th, 2019. Is there a second? I second it. Okay. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? May. Okay, minutes from May 13th have been approved. Uh, let's take the second one the, uh, from the work session that was on Monday, May 5th, 2019. Any changes or corrections to page one? Page two. Page three. Or page four. I just I was looking at the wrong minute set of minutes. Oh, so I had something for the first one. So we, okay, we'll, we'll finish this one up and then we'll just go back to that. All right, uh, I move that we accept the Monday, May 15th, 2019 minutes as written. I seconded. it. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Okay, those minutes have been. Approved. Uh, Mary, you'd well, like to go back I, to. I think that on the minutes from our April 8th meeting, that it did not indicate. April 8th. May 13th. Remember that part where I said it correctly today? May 13th. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think it. What page no, Well, I'm on page three, I guess. It indicated when Ted and I came back. In, which it said when we left. It didn't say when we came back, oh. so it just seemed like it should say that we came back, which I guess was at the end of whatever your discussion of work. Mm -hmm. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah, after you move to approve chapter 12.20, I think. Well, I second. This. So it was before that public hearing. Yeah, it, it was between, I guess, chapter 1258.01 uh, district two table and before 1221. Yeah, 
have to figure it out. I'll have to figure it out. So, yeah. yeah. Any other things anybody knows? Do we need to vote on that change? Uh, no, you already approved them, so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Kind of sunk that ship, but I'll okay. go back and I'll go back and insert it. All right, thank you. Um, All right, uh, are there any communications tonight? Okay. Uh, council report, Marianne. Yes. Yeah, I have um, some things. Just sort of FYIs, I guess, at this point. At our last regular meeting, I had talked about uh, a. a voluntary and inclusionary zoning kind of proposal what I was going to do, which I ended up calling incentive-based affordable housing. I wrote up something, I gave it to council. There was a brief discussion. It was nowhere near being adopted, but I don't think I ever sent it to planning commission. And I, and I thought I would just do that. It's clearly something that will take a lot of discussion and work to do, but given that it would be something planning commission would need to be looking at on Sunday. So that was one thing. Uh, then there were two, the last two council meetings, there were discussions about parking, and it came up first about a proposal to have parking on Baby Hughes Park, which didn't happen, which was not really, it is not going to happen, presumably. Uh, and then we talked about parking in general, but I think that planning commission has an interest in being involved in whatever decisions get made about parking. And I also note that some of the proposals for the comp plan update included parking. And presu presumably, parking will be something that will get included. Yep. Just so you know, in that discussion, it was also a good. PowerPoint that Karen Winthrow forwarded to me that I thought was really a good discussion about parking, and I'm happy to send it to the Planning Commission. I'd like to see it. The last thing, and I don't really know that this is an issue for Planning Commission, but involved the swimming pool and swimming pool rate increase. So, rate increase for swimming pool probably isn't put in the Planning Commission, but the swimming pool itself would be. A well, that's, oh, and then there has been a proposal to create a housing commission, and there's going to be a first discussion of it at the next council meeting. It would be a, whether it's called a housing board or commission, it would be a, a commission of council, and whether it would have a relationship with the planning commission. Whether it would be a subcommittee, for example, a planning commission, that was one suggestion. But we're going to start that discussion. Does anyone have any questions about any of that? Okay, thank you. All right, we all have uh, open the floor to uh, any citizen comments on any items that are not on the agenda. There aren't any tonight, so all right. So, uh, so what are we going to do next? Do we, uh, do we want to go to give a little brief <coughs> this is uh, down explanation? Old business? This is oh. this is on the map way, old business. Okay, so we're jumping down to the first couple of items on that are currently listed on the old business. Okay. So, uh, Matt McCoy was going to be here tonight, he had an emergency um, that came up, and so he did send me some information. Um, and I'm going to pass this out to you. They have a landscape architect, and um, she is uh, very interested. She's a big supporter of encouraging stormwater management on each individual lot as opposed to one big area for detention. Um, that's one of her ideas. Um, one of the things that they're going to look into doing, and Johnny can talk a little bit more maybe if he wants to make a comment or two, in relation to the stormwater survey, um, is that <clears throat> they are going to look at um, stormwater management subdivision regulations that would look more like that picture as opposed to, to, to um, traditional ponds and piping networks. They'd also like the possibility um, of using pervious asphalt in the right scenarios. 
Um, and they also are going to be looking at um, stormwater calculations um, that are written to for more intense storms, which we seem to be experiencing on a more regular basis. Um, he said uh, in a meeting that we Johnny and I had with him, he said um, subdivision regulations all over the place are um, the calculations are often for 24 hour rainfall periods of like 4.6, 4.8, 8, 8 inches in that rainfall uh, time frame of 24 hours. And he said, we're seeing that in 12 hours, sometimes even less than 12. Um, so that's another thing that in these subdivision regulations that he wants to um, <clears throat> update in ours. And Johnny, <clears throat> do you have anything you want to say about that as far as the stormwater study or how that's going or the um, you're, you're going to put this sort of as an add-on to the stormwater to survey. We, we had just identified like 10 areas to start with to look at correcting some problems before we uh, get further into the study on the whole village. We have some immediate needs, so that's where the study is, and they're working on that currently. And so they're going to do the subdivision regulations. As part, as, of, part of, as part of it, it's an hour. So, so do you mean that choice one is working on those particular instances? That's correct. Helping, working with Helping to resolve it. Okay. And Matt said if he, you know, he could, he'll be, he'll be further along by the time he could come to the next meeting and make up a better presentation, actually have more information for you as for suggestions to update our subdivision regulations. Anybody have any other questions or comments about that? Right he was only going to be here to just give an introduction, so I just kind of did that. Should we move on to this? Sure. Because, Johnny, you also want to talk <coughs> possibly about the comprehensive plan use plan update. Well, Johnny was a part of the review for oh, staff, right. yes. So. Okay, so it's okay if we move on and discuss that next. Sure. And so. Oh, so I can just briefly say that um, uh, staff members, um, Patty Bates, Johnny Burns, and myself reviewed all six and we eliminated three, which I had in my report. Um, that left three remaining. Um, and then we met um, with the incoming manager, Coseway and John Burns and myself, and um, went over each one very thoroughly and um, came up with a decision which I put into my report. So that is staff's decision, which is an ascending order, so the final one that is mentioned there is the one that we're suggesting. And that's the community planning insights. Yes. <clears throat> Are you so you're so, open? Yeah. 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 So, so, it, it was interesting because I think there was only I, I had three three no's and three yeses and only one of my yeses was your yes, which was CPI, uh, but I also had some other thoughts, uh, which I wanted to just <coughs> put out on the table. This project, I hadn't realized how important this project was. Mm -hmm. I was just like, okay, they're going to do this online and make some changes. Well, that's not the case, clearly. There is going to be a lot of public involvement, a lot of subgroup involvement, and it's going to take a long time. I mean, it's going to take between Six and nine months. Six um, So I'm thinking that it's critical that we, planning commission and council, perhaps, and staff, feel very comfortable with the person or people we're working with. And I was going to propose that we might choose our top two or maybe three, or even if it's 
we're clear as one and have them come in and meet with us so that we we feel like yeah okay this is someone we can work with because these that what it looks like on paper might be different than how we interact with the person so that i just want i'd like us to think about that as well when you say us, what do you mean by us? I'm talking about us sitting at the table, where we are here. Well, yeah, you know, I'll make my comments. Mine were, in fact, very similar to yours, Denise's. I ranked the uh, community planning insights first. And I, and I agree with Marianne. You know, it is hard to tell by what is written. Uh, but I, you know, I sort of ranked them all, and I particularly liked that one because they were really the only one that talked about the <coughs> attention to the digital piece, mm -hmm. uh, and they actually had a person that you know was an expert in that. Where some others had people with similar backgrounds, but they didn't specifically talk about it. I also liked that one because of the number of public meetings they were going to have. I just thought it was very well written. Mm -hmm. um, and then the last one, and I think that might have been, or maybe it wasn't one that you had, the MS. I also ranked. Um, yeah, that was your. We, uh, our top three were CPI, OHM, and um, human nature, which was part of, was that a part of CPI? I don't know. Well, yeah. yeah. So, <clears throat> You know, I think it is an important decision. You know, I will. I don't have a strong feeling one way or the other of whether or not we meet them or just uh, go on your recommendation. I'm going to say, buy-in buy is always a key. We've always run into this issue and everything that we've done. Um, just in general speaking, if we get the, if we have them come in, I think if you've got your top two to come in and just talk to with us, it's going to give us more buy-in on them. I mean, as you guys said, reading in paper is one thing, but if I get to see you, understand you, get a feel for you, buy-in's it. That's going to sell it to us, and then we can turn around and sell it to the community, and vice versa. It's just going to be, it's going to be more of a transparency. It's going to be better for all of us if it's being cut. You get our top two or your top one and just have them go through that. It's just going to be better, better for us all in the long run. Um, I read all of the um, RFPs, uh, put it down for a week, <clears throat> read them all again, uh, pulled out the three that I liked, um, and my comments were almost dead on with that. Um, I agree in order, and I agree with the top three. Um, I think as far as meeting them, the group from um, LJB, uh, we know. Uh, they've done a lot of work for the village. Um, they know the village um, better than just about anybody because That's of their the community plans, but yeah. Um, you know, certainly I think that the GIS section and how they put this into digital form is really what we're looking for, and so they stood out to me. Um, I think that the rest of it, if we get into too much minutia over uh, the sections that they're describing, we're going to start to rewrite the comprehensive plan in a way that's going to require a lot more services, certainly than uh, what we're paying for. And I think that if we also go into a great discussion about what we plan to do, um, a new visioning process should be done before then. So I personally am fine with um, really going ahead with staff recommendations and just going forward. I think I am also inclined to want to meet with them. Uh, yeah, but I, I also uh, understand that's my concern about if we get too much into the weeds during that meeting. That we well, there's also a protocol there. Um, once the planning commission makes a recommendation and it goes to council and how much is council going to want to do it, yeah. 
um, how much are they going to interview, and then does the process start all over, and do they really understand the what we're trying to get? I, I don't know that they could, but that just makes sense. If we are going to meet with them, I'd like to just meet with the top two. Um, and I, I, the top two, from our perspective, um, Josue and Johnny and I were at the CPI and the um, human nature. So I don't know what your top two are. Um, human so, nature was one? Yeah, it's human nature slash CT consultants, I think. Um, CT. Yeah. 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 Um, <clears throat> I, uh, we, we like both, both um, CPI and human nature really took the elements of our plan and then restated them as to these are the things that we are going to focus on. Um, they're the, the types of projects that they've been involved in um, and the way that the um, plans looked um, was um, impressive from, on both. Um, one thing that um, the Denise, was it human nature? You have a rank designing local, which is a different one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's okay. So, that's okay. So, that's so it's O. O H M. Okay. Yeah. See, I didn't rank human nature very high. I, yeah. I they had they had grammatical yeah. errors in their cover letter and. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, they, they did. I like their project in um, Kentucky that they did. And, um, also, they had one in, in Cincinnati. Uh, but I really like CPI and some of the things they were doing it too, especially Cleveland and, and Cincinnati. And, um, anyway, so. Yeah, but in the end, <clears throat> CPI had uh, their part of their group were, was LJB and the GIS. and. With human nature, that would probably be an add-on cost because they didn't have that. They were going to rely on what we have, our in-house. Yeah, they didn't. They didn't um, include it in what they said. Right, and so um, I will say, and maybe you can say that uh, you talked to Josue, and he he really wants to be a a single recommendation that goes to council. Yeah. Well, and, and I think one of the difficulties of trying to arrange a meeting or meetings is with some schedules of everybody who's, you know, they, you know, I suspect there might be a considerable time delay in doing that as well. I'm really concerned about that. Uh, yeah, so I mean, however we do this, if yeah. we have two, then we, what he'd like to see is we just bring one recommendation to council. Is council going to want to do the same thing, Marianne? Would you guys, do you think you guys going to want to interview these? Interview the groups too, or 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 we just going to depend on um, planning would, commission to say. I would hope that they would rely on planning commission and just and move on from it. With, well, planning commission is here for. I, I would think council would be more inclined if we said we, you know, explain the process that we went through and we invited <clears> the top two, or if it's just the top one, in to spend <clears> ten or fifteen minutes with us. I mean, I understand that does delay push it delays things but I mean it can make a big difference who you, who you work with even if they look good on paper how That's and true. for CPI Aaron uh, Soro is not with LJB he's with this other company I don't some people I don't know if you know him or not I don't yeah I mean he's the principal he's the owner of that he, he's going to be the one that we would be working yes he's coming and meeting with the, the task forces and like whatever public meetings we have. <clears throat> yes. Well, it might be, maybe, maybe it would add efficiency if <clears throat> you as a group decided upon who was going to be your comprehensive plan task force. You need two individuals from planning commission, um, and then obviously we know who from staff is going to be involved because that means an hour long day meeting with that task force and those staff people who could come back and say, we were fully satisfied with that. That interview process, and that way you don't have to call that a whole meeting. Be easier back. To... <clears throat> no. I just have to ask a question. 
Uh, LJB's worked in the village a very long time, all the way back to pre John Eastman. We've continued to work with them. They know our infrastructure better than some of the staff know it. So by them coming to meet planning commission, what more would you guys gather from meeting the 95% of the team versus just the 5% that LJB teamed up with? Would be my question. I, because staff has worked with them for many years and, and we solely trust they have a lot of information. Uh, so if they are the top recommendation, like staff has said, actually, I want to go back to when uh, Denise and I met with Oshwe. Oshwe's number two was technically, or his number one was technically our number two, which was human nature. Human nature. Human nature. But he read the proposals in Washington, D.C., and then we let him talk, and then he asked us our thoughts. And once we laid out the reason why we chose our number one, and the points of number two was is when they teamed up with LGB, it was going to be an extra, it's going to be above and beyond the $30,000. He's like, I fully understand. He was like, that was a great choice. And I didn't see that because I did not have the insight. We all have the insight, but we, I'm just asking, what would the meeting with four other people do that staff can't already testify to? Well, my, my understanding is that there will be a lead person that will be doing it. And I assume that that's and Aaron Sorrell. I would actually be. say the lead person would probably be. It'll be Aaron and, and Matt. Well, Matt not Matt, uh, Dan. Dan Hoyt. Dan Hoyt, yeah. I think Aaron will probably, Aaron, from what I gathered, Aaron's going to be doing like 90% of the writing of it based on what happens. But I would expect that Dan would probably be as Dan involved. and Kelly will be your, the most people in the village. Yeah, those two. But, um, and, and Aaron might be more involved in like the public meetings, you think, or is what I would see. I was just asking a question. So my, an, my answer is mm -hmm. that if there are going to be a number of stakeholder meetings, public meetings in which their lead person is going to be in attendance and help with, the personality of that person is important. Okay. That's why I want. Okay. Let me. Well, let me throw something out here too. So, if staff is comfortable with it, with with community planning. If we look at work, we're comfortable with it. We pass it along to you, to, to council. At least we can circumvent our side of it. If we are all in line with this, and say let let council do this is our recommendation. Let council so at least it takes us out of the way of being another one more step in this in the process. So we could so we could just expedite it a little bit quicker if we're in agreement. If planning commission would like to do that, that's a point and have council decide whether to bring them to one or two people. Um, to public meeting. You know, I think that this, that this process is more technically driven than it is anything else. Yeah. And in a technically driven process, you're not going to get personality coming to this table to really <clears throat> open up and and be in a way because they're just different mindsets of folks. Well, and, you know, so it is going to be a, a lot. I agree with that because the visioning is coming next year, and that's where we're going to really do. There's definitely going to be public input in this, but it's going to be uh, a lot of <clears throat> here is what we're looking at. These are the maps. These are the you know based on what we have all the information we've gotten from the housing needs assessment, from the um, visioning plan from before, this is where we're at, is, is there public comments on that? That would be incorporated into it. But as far as a new refreshing of the visioning, that would come in 2020. Yes, and, and that's where you do need personality and people that engage with the public and so, things like that, much more so. So would, would we want to maybe just um, ask Mr. Sorrell if he would meet with maybe a couple people of planning commission and a couple of staff? That sounds good. Just and then and based on that meeting, um, we can if, if we're if, if planning commission feels comfortable with 
a couple of you and a couple of us meeting with them and then we feel comfortable with them, we can then go ahead and make that uh, recommendation to Catherine. And does planning have to have voted on it? I think, uh, yeah, I think it is useful. Yeah. You think yes? Mm -hmm. So we would not be able to vote until our next meeting then? I think you could, I think you could vote to, to, to make the recommendation that if these four people find okay. him, then that, that, okay. that recommendation that yeah. could go on to council. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's that's well and, and in order to save time, you might also want to vote on your on a number two selection and sort of tee that up in the event that the, the meeting does not go well and, and you want to go on to a second choice and bring those people in that you don't have to have another meeting to do that. I think that if it does, if it goes there, it needs to come back to planning commission and we need to hear what went on in that meeting to determine what the pitfalls were that decided that they went south. Okay, so then we'll just wait until the July meeting. Okay. Well, I'd like to come back. Well, actually, two things you said, Ted. I mean, well, initially, I thought it was going to be much more better. But then when I start reading about traditional public meetings, open houses, information session, vision process, stakeholder mm -hmm. focus group interviews, youth and young adults, that's when it starts going, oh, this, this is involving the people. Mm -hmm. It's not just it's technical stuff. So that's when I started thinking that we understand who we're working But I think that those meetings are, are set aside for the purpose of introducing the public on all of the documentation that's at the plate that will be put into the comprehensive plan and getting input on how those things might change once the vision comes. Um, well, that's a big step to me. And, it, and, we can, and we can get this massage with him too. We're, there, we're there to tell him this is what, this is what we want. And, they, and sometimes maybe it wasn't clear enough. I mean, they had to go with our interpretation of it. Well, and let's make it very clear that, you know, what, we're, what we've asked for is basically the database to be able to manipulate and change as we want to go through additional processes on each one of those sections of the code. And, you know, that's what we're asking these folks to do. I don't want to go, I don't want this thing to turn into another vision. And it's going to very easily go sideways. I mean, that's... That's all, all of them had an element of that into their in their uh, yeah. proposal, but because we said the very first plan element was citizen engagement, we so they definitely put it in there. But I think we need to define what we mean by that a little bit more. So. Yeah, I mean, you know, to me, it's like the um, the active active transportation plan is a perfect example of of a thing that is in our books, right, that the public really has never engaged in. It's never been presented to the point where there's been a lot of vetting of what that plan means, how it's going to be implemented, where does it exist in our code today, none of that. You know, and you take that on almost every other aspect, and the public needs to see that we have all of this work, it's going into one document, and next time we do a process, we're going to go through and redo these, but you need to be aware of what's done first. Otherwise, all that work is just going to go to the wayside. Mm -hmm. it, it will, whether it's there or not. It doesn't get presented in a comprehensive way, which the comprehensive plan purpose is to do that. Then I think this whole thing could go Yeah, I think my biggest worry with this has been that I don't want us to get this kind of locks in the sauce on the whole uh, visioning part of it because to me that is the, that is so important. We need to have something that we this comp plan is so important for us to actually have something that's number one up to date that is visual that people can click on links to be able to get if they want to dig deeper into information. Maybe somebody really is interested in the transportation mm -hmm. part of it. Maybe somebody else is more interested in the housing, but you know. They don't have to read through everything to try to figure it out. And this would be great. I mean, it'll be easier to update. I think that we can probably just do a visioning every 10 years. Right, that can, be, that can feed into that. That can exactly. feed into the shop, and that would be ideal. Exactly. How quickly do you think we can get a meeting like this set up? Well, can, how, how long oh. can we stop? 
Um, like I, I said, I, I initially thought it was going to be more of a technical thing, like you're talking about. As I read these proposals, it was much, to me, all of the proposals were much more about, well, we're going to meet with this group and see what they want, and this group, and this group, and the whole, and we're going to involve the whole community in this. And then it started seeming much more like a visioning process for the comprehensive plan. So we can go back and forth about whether it is or whether it isn't. But then I started wondering, do we, do we need to do a visioning process? Have we not been doing a visioning process every step along the way? Or shifting it with the visioning process that we do next year or whenever we do it be a different sort of event yeah. than we did last time. Um, in other words, we have all this material. We have the active transportation, we have the housing stuff, we have climate action plans. We have all this stuff put in. So if we are actually going to do a visioning process after would it be more at looking at what we have? No, it's looking at what we want, where we want to be 20, 10 years down the road. The last then why don't one, we do the visioning process before this? Because it wasn't even time to do it. When we did it in 2010, they, they, there were a set of overarching goals within that. And surprisingly, you'd be surprised at how many of those we have whittled away at. And, it, and the committee suggested in 2020, let's consider it again. So if we get this comp plan and all this this piece together, that is going to be uh, a pay, a web page where they can go, they can click, and they can have all that data. Then we can go back and say, okay, here's where we were in the visioning. Now, we, and this is what we have. Where do we, where do we see ourselves 10 years from now? And those, and then those become the goals that we set for ourselves to go to keep moving forward. Exactly. Well, and it's not really possible to do a realistic visioning plan if you don't know whether or not you can implement something. For example, if there's no infrastructure to a particular area of town, you can vision all you like about what you're going to build there, but yeah. you can't build it. Yeah. You, so you have got to put this in, into place so that then you can lay a vision on top of that framework and say, we could make this work. We know where things exist to be able to do these things. That's such a great point. And that's what I liked about CPI is is because of LJB is they'll be able to to really look at what we these undeveloped areas and be able to project what we can do and what is it going to take what what are we going to need and based on what we're going to need where are we going to get funding for it. Well, then what is the value of involving all these various kinds of meetings if all we're doing is basically taking what we have all the disparate pieces and putting them together so it's an online product. Why bother? Well, I think that can be part because the, the ultimate online product, just like you know, with the with the paper version that we that we had before the previous uh, comprehensive plan use plan, that there are efficiencies and deficiencies in just the way it's laid out. And I think the people doing this, talking to the constituencies can get a better idea for that document, both the print document and also uh, the electronic digital version of it that can best suit the interests of, of those different constituencies. Kind of like, you know, to help them edit it better, if that makes sense. Not necessarily so much for the content, but for the, I see it more as uh, for the usefulness of the document. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think that. I think public awareness on how to use and resource the, the long range goals and visions of the community is very underutilized. It's not referenced enough. It's because it's difficult and it's outdated. And, you know, we went through a visioning process that I thought was incredible. And I agree with Denise that if you read it and you look at just how many of those goals have been accomplished. You know, in spite of the fact that it's not referenced a lot, I think that it's referenced a lot to staff. But, you know, once that process is done and, and you, you put that gauge there and you say, oh my gosh, look at what we did. Now the, the community needs to see that in a form. And that form is a comprehensive plan and an update on where we stand today. And the community involvement is, I think, on our end, 
more informational and getting it out there that the community has been working for 10 years, we've accomplished all these things, here's the compilation and a tool for you to access views more readily to be more active in the community and more informed in the community and not get bent out of shape over one little event that might happen, right? But you can see the process for how it got there. Things like parking, things like parks, things like everything that goes on. And at least that's how I see it. You know, and that's, a, you know, what the what this consultant is trying to do is interpret a lot of information that they've looked at, but what they're seeing is that our comp plan needs work. They can see that it, you know, really has a lot of deficiencies. You know, it's up to us to sit with them once they get under contract and then lay out how each one of these steps want to be involved, how the citizen wants to be involved, and then move forward. Well, I would just like to move this process along. Yeah. So I wondered if you would like a motion. Yes. Um, that um, I would like to move that we have staff and some of planning commission, whoever can be uh, with um, community planning insights. And particularly, I guess we would like to have Aaron Sorrell um, involved, talk with them. And if staff then and planning were meeting, are comfortable with the decision to planning support it going to um, council? I second that. Yep. Second. Mm -hmm. Roll call. Are you supposed to? Uh, what we roll? All right. Could, well, could we repeat what we're yeah. doing? Did you get a version of that? Well, my version of it would be that you are recommending one group pending staff meeting specific with that group and specifically with Aaron Sorrow of that group. And if their recommendation is also positive, then that recommendation is for the council. Yes. All right. Yes. Okay. Yeah. To call the so good. All right. Uh, Pilata. Yes. Donnell. Yes. McQueen. Yes. Stop. Yes. Good. Yes. And so who, maybe two people that would want to meet with us? We probably try to schedule uh, I am very interested. However, I'm, not, I'm leaving on the 18th and I'll be back to the month. Yeah, I'll be here for, uh, I'd be interested to okay. do it again. I'll be here. And can you set it up and then invite any of us? I think you know, whoever okay. wants okay. to be there, I'll good. Do that. I'll set up and whoever wants to, make okay. it. is it daytime, afternoon? We want to set it up before our next, I'd really appreciate being able to participate. Um, you're leaving when? 18. <clears throat> Tuesday. You leave from tomorrow. Yeah, I'll be gone next week as well. Oh. <clears throat> Let's see. Um, you can make phone calls one. I know I can. That's true. Um, I mean, I can be here. What's your Thursday of this week? For that. Maybe everybody open Wednesday or Thursday. After, afternoon. Well, I can make, you know, I have to my granddaughter on Thursday, but I can get okay, I'll let now. Take care of Okay. What time? Oh, I think you're going to be at their mercy. Yeah, I'm so. RDN. I know, I was going to say. <laughs> Whoa. RDN. He doesn't know what RDN is. <laughs> Who doesn't? Yeah. <laughs> oh, right. Now. Thank you. Yeah. So I will tell. I will send something. I'll let you know based on everybody. All of y'all know um, if we can um, ask this Aaron. Sorry. Well, and just a quick question to you folks: Is are, are you comfortable if it is only that individual who meets with staff, or do you want some representation of the group? Because I think it's going to make a difference as to how quickly they can pull folks together. What would do you want to see? I, I think if we get him to show up, we send out an invite to the planning commission and that one individual. Sure. That's what I'm just checking out. Yeah, yeah, I don't think we now if he if, if they can make their team happen, but we're only interested in one. Yeah, yeah. I guess okay. he, he can always ask because you yeah. know the others and you're comfortable. Yeah. Right now. He's the okay. okay. That'll make it easier. <laughs> Okay, now we're 
jumping back up to the public hearings? Or? Can you post this? Yeah, it's okay. No, but you're not here for the accessory. Yeah. No. Okay. For the transient accessory? No, okay. no, that's no. something else. Okay. Yeah. So the accessory dwelling units on a two-family property, I did report, but I understand that the, the person that was requesting it has um, pulled that, is that? Yes. Okay. So um, if we want to have, could we maybe um, just schedule a discussion in general about that at, for an agenda planning and do this some other time? We can get through this transit guest lodging. You, you said you wanted to talk about it again? Well, I wanted to understand what in terms of uh, thinking forward about housing attached housing is something that we may be seeing more of mm -hmm. whether it's condos or townhouses or rentals or duplexes mm -hmm. so understanding what our current regulations are about attached housing specifically in this case duplexes as and what you said is a duplex could have a could add on an extension and become a triplex, I guess. You could have it, then it would be attached. Yeah, yeah. But they can't, can't have an accessory dwelling. Right. So I just wanted under I just wanted to get a better sense of what our regulations are now, because I think as we start moving forward, especially when we're thinking about moderate income housing, mm -hmm. that we may be focusing more on attached housing. And so I'd like to understand what exists now whether yeah. because we might want to well i can I, I can like give you a brief on that and i'll do that at the next meeting if you want because it's in the code okay. i mean residential a is different than residential b and c but i can kind of give you an explanation of that right. um because you know you do see big houses that end up getting converted into three units or four mm -hmm. units it is allowed it's only allowed in certain districts, though. Like residential A, it isn't allowed, but residential C, it is. So, I mean, I can go over that and I can explain the difference between a, a attached versus duplex. Okay. So, you'll do a report on that for the next Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. So. so, but uh, maybe we should do the new. Yeah, I was thinking go on to the new business. Okay. Okay. We'll get that with, uh, yeah, and then we'll go back because they're going to do one piece of legislation and they're going to leave. Because we're going to go transit guest lodging. Okay, so August schedule. I just wanted to say that um, typically council does not have their meeting in August, and that is when Judy, you go on vacation. I'll yeah, I mean, you're gone. I'll be back. You know, we're planning commission what happened, but. I Yes. Yeah, I'm not going to be here. So I'm. In. So I have. Um, I've been. I've switched to salary, and I have like Buku vacation time that I've not taken. So I'm going to be gone. <laughs> yeah, from the first to the, and I'll be back the 17th. So okay. one of the things that Judy wanted to, and I think, did you send out something to them about it? Just I, I did, and I have to say, you are. You're either going to lose a planning commission member, or you may lose an alternate, a council alternate, because the Monday night meetings I set out. Oh, I refought Tuesdays. It's not you. Oh, but I, I, can, I can do Tuesdays. I mean, I have, I have all but one person who can make an alternate night. And I have, you know, a council alternate who absolutely cannot be the alternate if the planning commission continues to be Monday night. Can that person make Tuesday night? Mm -hmm. So, Frank was the one who then couldn't, so if we all could make Tuesday. Because I originally couldn't make Tuesday, but I've changed my I mind. couldn't make Wednesday. Yeah, I can't make Tuesday. But I can make Tuesday. Tuesdays? I'm open. Tuesdays. I'm open. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, so, what I, I'll send it back around again because it would need to be the second Tuesday of each month. I could make the second Tuesday, not the first, but the second. Okay. That's, that's, that's for I the, need the sure. possible rescheduling of um, yeah. PC break. Yeah. So August, are we going to be like the last half of August then? So just 
Well, let's just take that as a separate matter, and I'll send it out because AJ's not here. I just want to make double sure, but I think he was able to be a little bit flexible. So I'll send that back out, and that, that's a separate issue. Now back to the August question for the weeks. So because things are gearing up here, and I don't want to have things drop the ball too much. Um, our second meeting in July is um, on the eighth. And if you wanted to, since we're not going to have an August, and you wanted to switch to the Tuesday, if you wanted to try to do something at the very end of July, we could, on like the 30th of July. I'm gone. That's the point. Uh, well, I mean, I just, I'm going to be gone, so. Are you? I'm gone. That's okay. That's oh, yeah, she's not his first meeting in August. Yeah. So we just want to wait until. Uh, you can do it without me, but. Well, the problem is, here's the problem with that. I wouldn't be getting back into the office the 17th, because I'm gone, which is a Saturday. I get back in on the 19th of August. Of August. So you're leaving when? I'm, I'm leaving. I'm, I'm Are we leaving. talking about July or August? August. August. Just, we're talking about August. So July, we're going to keep a regular meeting. Yeah. Yep. Okay. But you're but you're out July 1st through the 17th? Please. August 1st. August 1st through 17th. So I'm back in the office on the 19th to try to do a meeting in August, I even it's it's too tight a turnaround. Even if I had somebody who needed to have a public hearing, I have to notice it two days. So could we meet the twenty sixth to twenty seventh of August? No, Monday or Tuesday. That wouldn't be it. Wouldn't give me enough time. I think you guys need to July. just cancel August. Or I think, cancel I think August. that's the request. Just, just cancel August. Don't keep trying to make it. Cancel August. Yeah. Well, do, would it make sense to have two meetings in July? <clears throat> yeah, she's not going to be here. So, I know. I know. Yeah, so. But if we have a meeting, I'll take, uh, you need to get your noticing out. You need to get your packets out. You need to get what somebody else wants to do, all that yeah. stuff. Ain't going to happen. What's on the agenda? Somebody submits an application. They need to do it before my interview. Are you going to push them off for another 30 days? Possibly. I don't know who else would do it. I mean, okay. but we can also, though, good point, let that be known in the in the paper, make it publicly noticed that there will not be a planning commission meeting in August. Yeah. We have on many occasions when someone like Cresco or something super pressing came in, we just called an emergency meeting and got an event because it needed to happen. So I think if someone had a true, oh, this has got to happen now. Could we, could we, because of that, just maybe make our July meeting a, a week later than we normally do? That's council. Tuesday. 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 Tuesday.
Um, it's done with new business and agenda planning. Okay. So now we can go back to. We've got one that they can hearings. stay here for, and then you leave. Okay. okay. And that is um, chapter. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm in chapter 178 Clarifying quorums <laughs> and the voting process, which uh, at the top of your sheet, in the various exhibits, which looks like this one. So a few pages. Is it so? I thought mine was in part of it. Yeah, it was exhibit C. Is that, yeah. No, no. it's not that. Right before exhibit C. Okay. So that, at the last meeting, we um, went ahead and voted to approve 1278.01, but out of that chapter, I had not noticed 1278.06, which is decisions of the board. And that would mean, in, in keeping it in line with the charter, changing the, the concurring vote of three members of the board to be the concurring vote of a majority of the quorum of the board. And then <clears throat> I'm suggesting deleting the abstentions or recusal shall count as votes concurring with the majority of those voting if the majority exists. I didn't quite understand that statement. If anybody sees any reason why that should stay in there, I don't. There must have been a reason why they didn't put it there. I think the, re the reason may well be that typically abstentions or recusals have functionally or no votes because you all you, you always need an affirmative vote, and you lose that potential for the affirmative vote. But I think it's simpler just to say a majority of the quorum. Okay. So that was that for one. I'm good. So, I'm yeah. yes. All right. Uh, open up the public hearing on the proposed amendment to 1278 06. Uh, seeing no public comments, I'll close the public hearing on amending chapter 1278 06. Would you like to make a motion? Motion to approve. Had written. Yeah. Seconded. Seconded. I'm sorry, who seconded? I don't know. Uh, what you call the roll on that? Yes. Janelle? Yes. Palata? Yes. Styles? Yes. McQueen? Yes. Doug? Yes. Thanks, Doug. Oh, thank you. I got about 30 of those at home. <laughs> Okay, so now we have. Oh, I'll just close my eyes. Start with Mary and back on. So we have uh, a series of text amendments, all associated with uh, transiting guest list, right? Uh, do you want to talk about them one at a time or take them all as a big package? I just kind of want to just have a meeting. I just kind of want to get a feel for where everybody kind of is at. Okay. I think I, I felt from. I thought everybody died. I mean, we're all, I think everybody's pretty much in agreement to make these a conditional use again. Restore these as a conditional use. Um, that would restore them in the three residential districts, um, B1, B2, educational uh, institutions. It's not uh, allowed in I1, I2, or conservation. There was something that uh, we talked about last time, and it's not in here, which is fine, but I wanted us, I would like us to consider it is having a, um, and, and I sh shouldn't even step back, it seemed to me that when I was rereading what Chris had talked about, um, 
in terms of having um, the owner on site, mm -hmm. that there were problems with that potentially legally, you said. Well, what we talked about is the difference between owner occupied and then we talked about permanent residency. Yes. And, and on the surface, it, it may be a distinction without a difference, but technically it is because permanent residence could mean different things. Yes. Owner occupied is different. Okay. I, I, I really hyper distinction, but I think it's one that, that, that we have to. And have I think to you set. mentioned one way to sort of maybe take care of that would be for us to have an upper limit on how many um, um, limit the transient number. guests. Right. And so our numbers right now were like, what, 60, 40, 40 something. something? Because I would like to propose maybe at our next meeting or a later meeting, I would like to have that, have a top limit. And then may I ask a question on that? So there would be a limit in the number of licenses that the village would issue. And then presumably then whatever that number would be, if a license were turned back in, that would mean that another license would then become available. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you said right now it's below 50? It's below 50 right now. And um, uh, you know, I did I did that map to show where yes. the concentration tends to be in the older <laughs> <in the> old <laughs> concentration. Yeah, um, I'm not, and I mentioned I wasn't as concerned with the. the <coughs> um, it did come to my attention um, one thing that I also that I think that we need to add in here. Um, we had when we when we did the application, we wrote establishment owner, and then we said if it's if the establishment it's not the, if the establishment owner is different than the person who is running it, um, we needed their name and. Uh, that was just really an error on our part. We probably should have put a property owner. I've gone ahead and changed my form. But what I would like to put, since we're putting it back into conditional hearing, is that if the person that is um, uh, applying for the transit guest lodging is not the owner of the property, then I want us to have uh, require a letter from the property owner. Because we had a recent um, situation where um, it was a, a, a rental, and um, they running out something and the, and the, the owner didn't know it. Uh -huh. That seems completely illegal too because the, the, the landlord is going to be liable for anything that goes on this. I don't even know yeah. why a renter in that respect would be able to do have an Airbnb. There should be no reason that that's allowed, permitted. Well, that would be a matter of the, of the lease because if the lease doesn't yeah. prevent an assignment or sublet. Yeah. Right. I foresee so the landlord's where responsible. A, so a, a landlord didn't have a good lease document, could put it in or sell it. Yeah, and most landlords do have the yes. thing that you yes. can't sell it, but some of them don't have lease. And sometimes, even if they have that, is an Airbnb a sub lease? Yes. It is in form of sub lease, yeah. I would say it is. I yeah. Agree in that situation. But I'm saying just as an extra I add agree. on I agree. protection for that, we can, mm -hmm. we, you know, because. Um, with the how with the recent home occupation when i realized it was a rental i did ask that she get a letter from the rental company that they were okay with her doing that home occupation so i think we should so that's one thing we should add in to our conditions well, yeah you know, i thought that the packet you sent along denise uh you guys have her, uh, with uh the general standards where you got you did the research and found you know, Los Angeles, Amsterdam, yeah. New York. Yeah. I thought that that was all very interesting. Yeah, very helpful. The days of use is another way that I think is a really I think that alleviates a lot of issues. You can go to days of use and everybody that you that you yeah. cited yeah. had some kind of days of use, which kind of gets it around the property mm -hmm. owner. It kind of gets your you know, if you're a permanent resident or an owner occupied, I think that gave us the key. Well, they, yeah. So I think we just identified a lot of the variables yeah. that were the sort of things that we were talking about in, in previous meetings. But in, in those notes, that there is one of them that talks about the difficulty of enforcement. Yeah. Uh, yes. I mean, yeah. The law presumes that people will obey the law. Uh, that's, yeah, I think it's on the, the pages aren't numbered, but uh, not 
Um, it is unfortunately not practically possible to enforce any formal limits over the number of times or number of days. No. Um, but I mean, certainly in a community of this size, it would be easier to do, and our enforcement tools um, could, could be done, but it would be, I would say this, time-consuming. Yeah, it would be yeah. time-consuming. Um, and I, yeah, so there were lots of different ideas in this. Mm -hmm. So I thought if there was anything that really, any, uh, any of these that you think might work for us. Um, and the safety requirements was great. I mean, having, yeah. having Colin, the safety requirement requirements is easy. I mean, that's, that's, we make that, that condition. He yeah. said he's fine with that. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, and I think having, in. you know, the cap limits, something with yeah. uh, you know, understanding the difference between the owner occupied versus the permanent resident. Uh, but in, even if we went with the permanent resident, which means the person might not be here for a good part of the year, but having to have identified some local contact or contacts that can be available in case of emergency, in case that owner is absent. Well, let me yeah, and it, I don't know if yeah. you looked at the packet that uh, yeah. that Mary Ann sent from Boulder, Colorado. They they required is there their, their did you see that? I, I she sent it to me. Yeah, yeah. and I, I looked at the uh, the material on the Boulder website. It's actually very interesting. And as far as on their application form, they had to list two people in addition to the owner that could be contacted to handle any problems in case of emergency, in case the owner couldn't be there. Okay. I thought that was kind of a nice idea. That's interesting. Yeah. And that's, okay. you know, that's, that's well, a pretty I know, simple I mean, step forward. I know for, that uh, the sense that I'm yeah. getting from people at council is that, I mean, there are some that would really like to see it only be owner occupied. Um, but um, at the same time, what I heard at the meeting that we had with those that own these homes, that that is, that we're, that we're just not, it's not as big a deal as we think it is. Yeah, and so I feel like the easier way to do it would be a cap on yeah. the number. And and maybe if we just cap them in those areas. Can we, can we maybe talk about a number to cap it at? Because if it's below 50, what is reasonable? 55, 60? I mean, I don't want it big. So I don't like and that, I agree with you. And the only other thing that I have to add to that is, do you want to go by districts, or are we? I mean, you know, I know if we, I mean, I know it's not a conditional use, so we can kind of look at it and say, if we're putting the whole thing under conditional use, I think that kind of gives us the ability of saying, you know, there's too many in that area. No, we'll just say no for that reason. But if we just put a cap number on, I think that may be cleaner. And see, I you know, I keep going back and forth on it in terms of capping the number and. I know that personally, if we had a cap of 50, and I was the 51st person that came in, I would be really hurt by that. You might be. You know, uh, yeah, because, you know, that's, any, how, that's how liquor license is. Well, I know, yeah. I know, but it's, it, I, I would still be, and having applied for a liquor license, I was hurt by that too. <laughs> <laughs> but, that, but that is also uh, something. But, uh, but uh, that's my stumbling block, I think, with. With a cap. But that's also yeah. something that can be because, changed. Because any number is going to be ultimately yeah. going to seem to be that arbitrary. Sure. Yeah. It's arbitrary. Yeah. But it but it, it's a way for us to monitor it. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. and I think one of the things we talked about, it would prevent somebody from uh, the outside coming in and trying to buy up yeah. units and then have them as a uh, transient guest lodging. Because you're going to have people that are going to buy units that are not going to, they're going to be snowbirds and they're not going to live here at certain times of year. You're going to have some that are going to buy them with the intention of moving in here later when they retire. You know, there's yeah. different scenarios, so it should be fair to everybody, but at the same time, not limit these people's choices, maybe that overall cap. Yeah, yeah, take a look at the, the Boulder thing, because they uh, required an affidavit uh, from the applicant that they were uh, in residence in the dwelling for, I can't remember the exact, like six months out of the year, uh, something like mm -hmm. that. Yeah. That's that is just, the, all yeah. I'm saying yeah. is that's going to be on an honor system, because yeah. I don't know how we're yeah. going to be able yeah. to monitor yeah. that. Yeah. 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 Other than when they do the twice a year fill out their tax returns. Right. 
and they say how many days they they, they read it. And that's on our system too, pretty much. Unless there would be an audit done. Um, and I don't know what the conditions would be there would be an audit. So I mean in looking at this, the biggest concentration seems to be in the RC history. Yes. R B as well. R C and R B. R A they probably have eight, maybe ten right now. Um, maybe eight, but for the most About part. Twenty five percent. Well let me see here. Three, four, five, six. Thank you. So six. These are all RB and then anything in the darker. Yeah, it seems like most of them are, are in RB. So a little less than 20% are in RA. Yeah. So I have a question for you. <clears throat> um, basically, you went from complete lack of any regulation. And now you're looking at regulating it. So it's almost like uh, you guys have no curfew if you eat anything you want out of the refrigerator. Oh, geez, you're getting fat and tired. Okay, hold on. And now suddenly everything cracks down. I'm wondering if, if it's worth thinking about you're immediately going to regain a lot of control over the situation simply by making it a condition yeah. of use. Yes, that's absolutely. Off. It was yeah. before. What Second, you the, the, the arguments around why people want to use this as a tool to be able to remain in their homes or you know as they age be able to afford to stay here they, i mean those arguments still hold and if i'm 50 years old now and don't need that option but by the time i'm 65 and do there are no more licenses well that creates a problem for me so do you want to throw all the regulations down right off the bat or do you want to throw down some of the means you know will control the situation and and put it on a tickler to say we want to revisit this um, you know every nine months to see whether we may need to impose more regulations yeah. as opposed think, to throwing them all out at once well yeah. i mean because i think a lot of the regulations i mean i agree with you just in terms of the pace but i think a lot of them just merit a lot of thought and discussion as well mm -hmm. um, it's, I mean, if I if, if it were up to me, based on my choice, it would be to restore it as a conditional use, put in those extra requirements with like the, the have to get the um, letter from the uh, owner if you don't own the property, um, if uh, have to get uh, an inspection for by the uh, fire department with carbon monoxide and. Um, fire alarms and, and or smoke detector, I'm sorry. And then that needs to be done on an annual basis. Um, and then let's, like you said, let's maybe see how this works because the conditional use process, we never used to get that many when it was a conditional use. And then all of a sudden, when it was permitted use, we got a flurry of them. And you know the conditional use process does require you to have to come, come and people planning commission. And, you know. If I could, I, I want to mm -hmm. layer in something here. Uh, it kind of addresses what Judy said. So when you look at the regulations here that we're summarizing, I think Denise did a nice job on this. Really staff that we're we're up to these. But so when you when you look at Amsterdam, for example. Um, you can rent out 30 nights a year, regardless of whether or not what they call the host, which may not be the other. But the host, if the host is there, it's exempt from the day from, from the night count. When you look at San Francisco, you can the host can rent out 90 nights a year in unlimited days if you're renting your room. So that's the owner occupied piece of this. Mm -hmm. And again, you go to Santa Monica, which is considered to be one of the most restrictive, and it just simply says the host has to live there, period. So it seems to me that from the discussions that I've heard in these, that we've been part of that for a long time, the, the narrative, the story that I've heard consistently of the greatest fear is that investors will come in by definition, not owner-occupied. It will remove housing stock that could otherwise be used for families, which has an impact on affordability. So if those are, in fact, the concerns, it would seem that that blend of perhaps limiting days, but having unlimited if the host is present, 
and that host then could be owner occupied or it could be a renter if consent is obtained from the landlord. Now, you, we could put those in as a state of policy. These are the factors that we are concerned with, and so that the applicant is aware of what, what planning commission may be looking at, or it could be legislatively created right now <coughs> as a recommendation for council. It kind of seems to me that now that, now that we've gone through this process and if you distill this down to what I'll call the, the, the common denominators, that's what I've heard. Which also then layers in the idea of just caps in general. But maybe you're not ready to go there yet. Um, because I know it's hard because no. you know we, we you know we 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 want to also consider you know we ask for the, the, the input from the people that are actually doing this and not all of them live in the properties that they have and um, yeah I and I think because of that, because I went to the meeting there where you were, and we heard all these people, and that's probably why I saw the caps as being maybe more effective, because you had the people who had several properties, they maybe lived in the township, didn't live in town, uh, but they're already here, they're, you know, they're already doing it. Uh, people who lived in Columbus and have a place here, and they're, so it seems like the caps was an easy way to limit how much you know i guess i'm also seeing that that's something that could be changed mm -hmm. but but i also think there probably is a limit with this small community of how many transient housing units that we want the market will determine well, that, that, that's, <laughs> that's, well, that's, that's, that's so what the market that. determines is why then you have all these uh, the, there, regulations there's an intermediate case. piece too which is also the use of a moratorium where the council could, could pass legislation that says we're putting a moratorium on our needs to develop while we determine what's in the community's best interest because of what's happening. So clearly that first step is the recommendation to go to conditional use, and then the next level is where do you go? Uh, and, and how confident is the planning commission that this is the proper step? The intermediate step would be to see what conditional use is and then with that staff report and that recommendation coming to the planning commission, there could be a recommend the state and say it may be necessary to impose a moratorium for a period of time if we determine that's necessary or staff determines it's necessary. But if we're doing a moratorium, then you don't even need conditional use because the moratorium would mean that we're not adding any. Well, it would prevent anybody from any, yeah. any change, right? It would be a, a, a stopping. But were you suggesting that the moratorium is something that we could consider, we could consider after we've done the conditional use for a while? If it seems like it becomes a problem, then we could impose or ask the moratorium. If you before. don't feel like you have enough data to feel comfortable as a body that you want to make a specific recommendation, so going with the whatever we do, what, what, what exists is grandfathered in, but they're not transferable. So if the house is sold, then it has to, the people have to reapply. So um, if you choose to do a you know, a cap, that's, you know, that's one thing. Or if we want to just say, if it's a owner occupied, it's just a room, we don't get as many days as you want. And if you, like you said, if it's not, you can go ahead and say so many days a year, but I don't even know what that number would be. I'd have to go back and get data from our tax, our finance director to see what's typical. And Well, I mean, I think that one can look at seasonally what, what the highest, rates of visitation are and, and find some reasonable number based upon that. You know, I, I would think that the Airbnb business is not flourishing in February and Yellow Springs. Well, a question for you about that. Is it possible to put it on out as a condition that um, the receipt of X number of complaints about any one, you know, transient guest lodging occupation can cause the revocation yes. of the license? Because really it's about quality of life mm -hmm. i mean from the other perspective it's about you know am i do i'm worried about my kids do i have places to park is there a party next door all the time because if none of those things are occurring and i'm happy to let my neighbor make their extra income if those things start occurring then i'm affected and i feel bothered by it but 
But that could happen at any point with any given transient guest lodging unit. It's sort of unpredictable. Um, but if that could be a condition that's able to be enforced or imposed, it seems like that will sort of put that quality of life piece back in the hands of the folks who live here a little bit. Well, parking certainly is a criteria that will sure. be coming to play. That is, the, yes. the, I, I recall our last meeting, we discussed the issue of whether or not there's been any uh, uptick in police reports related to transient guest lodging establishments, and I don't think there really have to. Mm -hmm. We don't have a recurring situation where one host is having a problem. I, and my, my gut reaction is in the bill is that is not going to be it's a, a not, significant it's issue, but I don't know. Yeah, no, I, but I think yeah, it but would help people to feel more comfortable about what is right. perceived of as some sort of national crisis of transient guest lodgings. Well, right. and if all of a sudden I move into a, into a neighborhood <clears throat> and now two houses on both sides of me are not owner occupied and they're using those as rentals that are transit guest lodging where you have people kind of it just changed the dynamic of the neighborhood. I think that's what I mentioned at the last meeting was that I had uh, one of my customers had mentioned that and said I have no problem I've got I've got two small children I just have to pay attention now because there's you know it's, it's always revolving next door. Not that that's a problem was that I have a problem I just have to be a little more vigilant and paying attention to what what's going to the surroundings. And that was his and and in the conditional use process you can deny can deny an application if your neighbors are not wanting it there. Um, can you? I mean, in terms, you can. I mean, it's a factor. It, is, it can be a factor. So, yeah. um, so we made it clear. I mean, so if we recap, if we're just going mean, to, if we recap two things we know we agree on, we definitely the safety requirements with, with, with yeah, the fire department. Safety. Definitely, that's a definite condition, right? Yeah. That we want to yeah. do it. Um, renters making sure that they have, that they're, if they're doing it, that the landlord is landlord consent. Or, or, landlord or, consent. Or, so we know or, yeah, those are for sure too. Cap limits. I don't know if we want to address it yet, or if that's something. I mean, that's yeah, person. We can I come back to it. To, I, I would have a hard time voting for a cap limit. Yeah, we can come back. So I'm okay for us yeah. waiting. Yeah. So and, see, and, and with a lot of these other because it's like you said too, we're pretty conditional use on the rates, so we're always we're, we're already putting a limit. I mean, putting people through the. I feel yeah. like you were going to say one other one. Yeah. Or are you going to say something about the, with the neighbors, or if there's like two? Can you the three strike rule. I mean, the three strike rule yeah, is kind of a good. That was a. Yeah. I mean, the three strike rule, whichever city had done that, was or that you had put in there was something good I, for a safety feature. Which one was this? I guess I've never been fond of three strikes in your <laughs> It's a concept. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, 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 I think I'm going to open this up for public comment now. If you'd good. like to come up to the microphone and right. please well, state your name for the record. And, uh, sorry, sorry that's been a little bit name. chaotic for you. <laughs> Could you say your name again? John Herbal. All right, John. Yeah. Um, I'm curious when you talk about the cap. I'm not clear on what you mean by cap. Do you mean a cap on the total number of units in the town, or do you mean a cap on the number of units that any one individual can have? Total, 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 number, total number, number of units, irrespective of individual. So one person could go into a, a whole business of having numerous um, Airbnbs, or whatever you call it. If you're yeah, okay with that. In theory, they could get a monopoly based upon your hypothetical. In theory, but then with the conditional use, that would, would be a determination of us saying no. And conditional use, I guess I don't understand that either. Is there some description of that somewhere that I can? Yeah, it's in the zoning code. Um, a conditional use is is a use that is can be allowed in a in a district in a zoning district, mm -hmm. but it has to go before the planning commission. Mm -hmm. There's a public hearing process. Um, where the neighbors surrounding the property um, get notification of the public hearing for them to come and similar to a zoning change. Then. Well, I mean, it's if there's a, it's it's noticed in the paper. Um, there can be conditions that are put upon it based on um, neighbor concerns. I mean, you may have a situation where the neighbor is worried about. The lights from the car that will come in from the parking lot, and then the planning commission would say, We want to see some sort of 
fencing screening that will block that because you're abutting a residential district. There's no say. one set of conditions no. now. Well, it's each individually it, case. It, well, we, we have a depending. set of criteria that we will follow within that. <clears throat> but there's... Um, it, it can right be, now, it's just open lot. I mean, it's, right. it's a free-for-all yeah. right well, now. The, the way I would answer the question is, the, the zoning code has a set of criteria that are established that any applicant would be aware of. The reason that there is a hearing is because the public notice then allows potentially affected property owners or other citizens to have an opportunity to let the body know of what the concerns are, as opposed to sometimes so the zoning administrator can simply grant permits without having to have a hearing, which makes sense for a lot of things. But on something that has a potential impact, larger impact, to a neighborhood or to, to the neighbors, then the process requires the public hearing. So at this point today, there are, it's like a free for all right Correct. now. And you guys are trying to establish some uh, rules or parameters for everyone to. It used to be uh, called short term rentals and it mm -hmm. used to be conditional. And planning commission um, had wanted to add a couple more restrictions on that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but that was also, during a time when when Airbnb was starting to get popular and, right. and um, a council decided to go with making it a permitted use, okay. um, but now there's concerns from council that there just seems to be a lot of them popping up, and and so they've asked planning commission to go back and review it mm -hmm. and come back with a recommendation. Mm -hmm. And we're looking; our recommendation is probably going to be to restore it to a conditional use with mm -hmm. with some restrictions on it. Mm -hmm. And then is there, um, in that uh, restoring it or trying to set it up, is there um, a definition of what a unit would be? Mm -hmm. like, would be a, that's already in the code. Would it be a, a separate code. frame structure or a tiny house or a motor home? Or is there differentiations between that? Well, it wouldn't be a motor home. Um, so transit guest lodging, there is a definition in the zoning code. Um, it's uh, it can be um, it's a dwelling unit what we define as a dwelling unit and it can be um, a, a room within it in the, within the dwelling unit or it could be the entire dwelling unit okay. or it could be an accessory or an accessory dwelling unit like a, which can be apartment above a garage, apartment above a garage or something like that so if I come to see you you can direct me where in the zone to find this sure or you can call me on the phone if you have a computer I can walk you through it okay yeah. Thank you. That's it. Thank you. Okay. Any other public comment? Okay. Then I'll uh, uh, close the public hearing. And shh. okay. I know we brought this a few times. So right. So should so we just? I want to wrap this up. Should we just um, do these text amendments? Yes. First. Yes. And yes. They are all just. So then following the text amendments, are we going to have a discussion about action items based upon the discussion tonight? Because I'm, I'm, sure, I'm here. Yeah, I think we should. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. That's, you got some thoughts on that. But let's go okay. get the text one amendments one. out of the way first. Uh, can we do these as a block or do we need to do them one at a time? Do them one at a time? Okay. All right. So, so well, let me just say oh, one thing. Okay. Um, pretty much <clears throat> the schedule uses for educational, residential, business, and the district use table you know all what we're doing there is we're changing it from permitted to conditional okay it's going to be this other one that we're going to have to make right. it come back with i'll have to come back with more if we can't figure it out tonight okay. Okay. So we will take that. them one at a time so the first one is to amend chapter 1246.02 and which is your exhibit three let me say on 12 Uh, because I want to make sure, is that, is that educational? Yep. Yes. It's exhibit three. Oh, sorry. Okay. Um, okay. So for exhibit three, I do want to point out on the third page, it will show up 
differently by the time it goes to council. But for right now, um, when we passed this in 2017, the American legal did not correctly make the changes. So what you're seeing on your copy is it's already showing as conditional. <laughs> and so um, that, that should not be. So what you should actually be seeing is a, is a P that has a line through it with a C that's underscored and then an underscored of the 1262.08E7. So I just wanted to let you know that. And hopefully, um, I was on the phone with them today that by or by or they sent an email today. Um, their, their, our assistant had worked through that for me, and um, I sent the email to them, and they were going to take these and try to get them done in the next week or two because I explained the urgency of it. Anybody have any questions or concerns? Twelve forty six point oh two. Okay. I uh, move the approval. Well, I uh, open the public hearing. Okay, I'll open the public hearing. Uh, see, no comments. Close the public hearing. Now. I move approval. Second. Are you asking for saying that you say you said? No, I, I'm seconding. Yeah, okay. Sorry. Okay. Styles. Uh, yes. Sorry. Were you ready? Yes. Styles. Yes. Oh, hi. Yes. Good. Yes. Okay. All right. Now let's move on to 1248.02 for residential districts. That is exhibit. It's your it's labeled exhibit four. And also in that, um, they already show it as conditional. Um, so hopefully by the time this goes to council, it will be correct. And what you're voting on is, is showing it as not underlined as transit guest lodging, um, and, but putting in that section 126208 and crossing out the P's and at C's. Sure. Discussion today. Open the public hearing on 1248.02. Close the public hearing on 1248.02. I move approval of 1248.02. I'll second it. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Good. Okay. Uh, now we'll go on to 1250.02, which is farther back in your, it's a, the second sheet of your exhibit form. Uh, business districts. And it's the same thing. The transit guest lodging should not be um, underlined. It should already be there. And we'll take out the P's and we'll underline um, the C's in the, in the next couple weeks. Okay. Questions? Okay. Open the public hearings. Close the public hearing. I move approval of 1250.02. I'll second that. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Okay. Now we're going to 1258.01, which is let's see, exhibit two, is what I should say. Which was correct. Um, <laughs> it had all the P's in it, um, yeah. and it's uh, that's how it's going to look. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Any discussion on that one? Okay. Uh, open the public hearing on 12. Uh, 58. 1250.01. Close the public hearing on 1250.01. I move approval of 1258.01. I'll second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Okay. Yes. Right, so exhibit one. This is uh, maybe chapter twelve, sixty-two point oh eight. So <coughs> so I Point eight. It should be the first one after my report. No. Okay, so um, exhibit one, I went ahead and put that if the applicant is not the property owner, a letter from the property owner agreeing to the use of their dwelling for transit guest lodging is required. 
Oh. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. No, and then, um, with all the underlying, right? Yes, okay. with all the underlying. Uh, yeah, so we're, re we're adding all this in. We're adding a section 7. So it would be 1262.08 E7. Um, I'm at, uh, All right, so, so on seven, you, where is it that it says the, uh, you have to have the consent, landlord's consent? I put that under number H. Okay. Yeah, wait, wait, wait. It, we're, it's all right oh, here. Right, so that what, H. What, H. Yes. Okay. If the applicant is not the property owner, a letter from the property owner agreeing to the use of their dwelling for transient guest lodging is required. I added that. Under I, I added an, in, an inspection by the Miami Township Fire and Rescue for the installation of smoke and carbon monoxide detectors must accompany the application for transit guest lodging. The detectors will be inspected by MTFR annually. Um, re added what we had before um, under G that transit guest lodging applications are non-transferable and I went on to say a change in the ownership of the property or if the application was submitted under a tenant's name and they no longer reside at this address that will avoid the application okay. um, and then I'm just kind of going backwards here F ingress egress we had said this before when it was short-term rentals no new access points or driveways shall be created or installed for access and number E, we had said prior, a minimum of one off street parking space shall be provided on the lot <coughs> in addition to the off street parking spaces required for the principal dwelling. Um, and then utilities, the transit guest lodging shall share all public utilities with the principal dwelling unit. We added um, transit guest lodging units will not be separately metered. That applies to accessory dwelling units, obviously, too. Um, Maximum occupancy by health department requirements. If the transit guest lodging is located in an accessory dwelling unit, no more than two adults shall act occupy. And we added that because that's what we require in an accessory dwelling unit. Uh, location. <clears throat> so this might be, I don't know if we want to add any more, but the planning commission shall consider the proposed location relative to its proximity to other such uses in the vicinity in order to avoid an undue concentration that could have a negative effect on the surrounding neighborhood. A transit guest lodging unit may be located in a dwelling unit, a room or rooms in a dwelling unit or an accessory dwelling unit. So that's another thing that you will evaluate. <clears throat> and then um, this uh, for the permit itself, the application has to include the contact information for the owner and if applicable, the property manager who can be contacted and will respond within a reasonable time period to any complaints, violations, emergencies, or other concerns related to the transit guest lodging property or tenants. And so that gives us that's what I've added so quite a bit of stuff to I like consider it. I like it. Uh, initially. Based on what we've already talked about. Other, yep. If you need to limit to have something you address later on yeah. the road. Absolutely. Do you, you want to yeah. add under that permit section repeated complaints from a single property may result in? Well, we could, we could, your... we, I mean, we could um, <clears throat> definitely make a. Otherwise, you really have no. You don't have any tools at hand to address sure, someone who doesn't really deal with those violations, who just lets them go because they don't. They know that there's nothing you've got. Yeah. Well, I would want to make a J then. Well, no, I think it could go under permit. Because um, it refers to back to that permit. The permit can be revoked if. Oh, okay. You yeah, that's true. Um, what, what, what letter are you talking under about? Under A. A. Yeah, okay. Yeah, the last <laughs> sentence. I would, I would create an A1 on that, because that's what we're going to do. I've been kind of working on some language here when we've been talking. Um, is there anything else you need for? No, so, if, so she's just saying tagging on to what where we say right so we're we're put, I would put a one underneath and have an a one so this would be so it's not one bit okay the, so the idea you want to break it out is so that anybody who reads it knows that there's subparts sure. to it so that you can be put on notice that 
there's consequences or what the law actually says. Okay, so we, so we, but when you do that, would this be A1 and that would be A2? No, Good, so you can make that one. We can break it into something. Oh, okay. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. Right. All right. You break it into A, you can make that one. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Right. Do you have language, Chris? Well, I'm working it out. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say the owner of any transient guest lodging unit uh, shall have the permit revoked in the event the village has received X, what we want to define it as. Um, that can be proved by, and this is where there are three standards typically in yeah. law, preponderance of the evidence, clear and convincing evidence, or proof beyond a reasonable doubt. Now, I would say that we don't want to use the, the criminal standard. No. So you're really between preponderance, meaning something more than 50%, not 51, but something more than 50, or clear and convincing evidence, which means essentially substantially at substantial I evidence. I'd say preponderance. <laughs> well, the, reason well, the majority of the war, right? <laughs> it was in what sentence, though? I don't know. Well, what, well, what are you applying to? Well, you, you, you're, applying, to you're, 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 you're applying to your group. Well, what's the standard? What's the standard? The, is this a police report? Is this, what, what is this just some form? I, I, think it should, I think it should be a report. In the, stand, in the, in the suggestions from staff, the reference is, a, where a permit is automatically revoked in the event the town, the community, the city, the municipality receives complete, complete, conclusive evidence, police report, video evidence, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, the, the trouble I'm having is drafting something like this on the fly. Mm -hmm. There are property rights that are triggered by the revocation of permit, which then trigger a due process procedure. The village already has due process procedures. So, for example, in the context of a utility billing dispute, there's a mechanism. So, I, I'm not comfortable making a recommendation to you today to say put this in the code. Now, I think arguably, if you wanted, you could approve us putting language in to pass it on to council without you seeing, or we could wait until July 8th and then bring this one back. Well, let me ask you this too, because we do this since I said on that utility resolution form. Yeah. If we have, if we just extend that board <coughs> to have we're going to have a meeting i mean that's where you know you've if there's been police reports whatever the number is going to be if it's two three four whatever i don't know what that number is going to be but whatever the number is then you got to go okay you have to go to the review board and you're going to be revoked well and i think you know whatever mechanism for resolving those problems we come up with i think it's not we're not going to have this we're not going to have a flood of these before July. No. So, so, so I would like. I would, so, so I, I don't know if it's maybe put a specific language off. What if I get a neighbor? Right. Well, that's the problem that I'm going to have with this. Yeah. If I've got if I've got somebody that's just going to call and complain because they don't, it's not a matter right. that there's a problem. I'm just going to call because I don't yeah. like yeah. the transit. Yes, that's a problem. That, that's More not going to that's not going to constitute. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I wouldn't think that it should constitute because right. you may not like what I'm running my business. Yeah. And you may call and call and yeah, call so and call when everything's fine, but I need a police right. report. Right. 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 It goes back to your preponderance of evidence. Well, and Judy, you may recall you may recall this, but I thought we had to come up with another dispute resolution for some other part of the code. My point is, I don't want to. I don't think that we should create a separate standalone body. I agree. We should incorporate some existing yes body. It could be the utility dispute board, and then layer that in to a function they might do. I'm not saying that that's, that's what we but I think that's do. A, I mean, it's a catch-all. I see it as a big catch-all. I think there's two boards that we sit that I sit on now. It's, that's, I think it's tax and yes. and, uh, and the utility resolution. And look, we don't get any of them. You'd have to change the ordinance. Okay. I mean, I, uh, I, yeah. I'd be more inclined to put it back on staff. Staff have ready access to the PD, to PD reports. Well, that's too. what I was wondering. Like, if for if if people are having complaints, then they need to when the incident is happening, contact the police. If the police keep getting you know these, they get like three or so many complaints. I would almost like is there language that could say that we could that the police department would have that latitude to make no. that no no I, I'll give you two I'll give you two possible scenarios that I could see. Neither one's going to come up. You can't get an answer today. But one scenario would be what we talked about, for lack of a better terminology, kind of that three strikes and you're out process that would go to something like the utility dispute resolution board. The other scenario would be that you have there's an annual renewal process 
for the license, the permit, and in that permit process, the zoning administrator could consider whether or not there have been violations that have been reported. But keep in mind, if you do the annual renew process, are we getting an annual renewal license fee? Or once you get yeah. your, so we are sure. doing it annually? We, we do sure. it, no, we're not, we're, we're doing it once and we, there's a fee because it's. But, but that's a one-time fee, it's yeah. not an annual fee. No. Didn't so, so if we're going to do it annually, we better well, get a piece. Right. Do it the annually. Boulders, the boulders. Yeah, right. do an annual fee. Right? Well, if you put the onus on the property owner to um, maybe when they pay to their taxes or what, on the rentals or whatever it is, send in a renewal. I mean, we get that triggered for liquor licenses. So annually, you get a, hey, this property is coming up for a liquor license. You have cause to dispute it. We check with the PD, PD says, well, we don't need calls for that. And we put in a non-dispute, we send it back. That means there's no hearing, they just keep their yeah. license. Really simple. So it would only really trigger if there an were. issue if, if, if the PD complaints. said, oh my God, yeah, actually we have had seven or eight calls to right. that same address. And then you, and that's really quite rare. I don't, I don't well, know that that But you have a state, you already have a state mechanism by which the state can control the liquor license process and they can deny it. So that's all that due process, you're right, because it's property interest. So we've got to still follow some due process procedure before we can take that person's permit. So again, there's no right or wrong answer, but I can make the case that there would be an annual permit renewal. Is there a fee associated with that? Or we would build it in and say, if these events occur, then it, could be, then it could be revoked. And this is the process. And this is the process you have. So then we'd have to decide, decide who revokes. I would make the case that, if, at least conceptually right now, that the zoning administrator would make that determination and then the appeal process would go to one of those two boards. So you will bring that back to us for July? With some guidance from you. Okay. Be, be, uh, Can yeah. we vote on the rest of this? Yes. And then just vote on yours. Right. What will be not yours, right. but yeah. you're going to write up right. for us. Here's what I would say: is that you can tell us tonight we're comfortable yeah. with yeah. the language, yeah. but we since we need to bring back this section of the code okay. back to you, we will put that other piece in. Now I got to warn you that that could lead the recommendations to some of these other ordinances having to change because. As Denise can tell you, you've got to circle back. Typically, you would say that, but uh, luckily on this, I don't see it because it's just permitted to conditional. Right, but we have to tie it back into a dispute resolution body, which would take it back. Uh, we you could come back to come back to find Well, we could do it yeah, that way. Yeah, we could do it that way. Yeah, yeah. 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 the conditional use yeah. if someone violates right. the terms. Right. So right. yeah, because so. everybody, so everybody, the first time has to go through a conditional use process, and then you're saying if if I get complaints then there will be a process for that and if they if, and I can deny them the to continue using it as a transit guest lodging if they want to appeal then they'd have to go through like another hearing like a conditional use where I state my case as to why but I, I don't I don't understand that if in your conditional uses you state you will lose your license if I'm, I don't see why we have to build in a dispute process. You don't necessarily, you, you're right, Judy, you don't necessarily have to, to that, but if you don't, the question would be, would that property owner then go straight to Kyle Police Court to the property denial? Yeah. Because yes. there, there is still a due process right. So the question you is, is story. well, <laughs> do, do we want to build in a process by which somebody has an opportunity to be heard to say the action is I fair? think you do. Um, Yes, but I, but I think we have to think about this. Yeah, go back I, I really, yeah, so let's not vote on this tonight because this will all be no. here. I don't think we need the, to. Well, the two parts you're comfortable with. The two parts where, you, where we've got smoke detectors, the recommendation from Chief Alton. So I'm comfortable with everything that's here. Everything, yeah. except for just I just want to add that. Right, A1, we'll talk yeah, about that. What you already so, done here. So V through I, you're So okay. you're saying we shouldn't vote on no, it. No, I mean, if you're already, it's up to you. You can, can but, yeah. but we're coming, still coming back to still you back with, with some recommendation piece. based upon the parameters of the discussion to be determined by staff. 
Yeah, um, but you, you, we also said, okay, well, let's hold up on the cat thing. Let's see how it rolls. You could do the same thing yeah. there. I mean, it could work on language, and, and it could come back in six months. Hey, you guys need yeah. to add this. Right? <coughs> let's do that. You know what? I want to vote on this. I want to get it off the table. Yeah, yes. I want to get it off the table. If it, that's because I think this is good basic stuff. Yes. And if, it, if yeah. we have issues coming up, I mean, you know, how many phone calls have we had? It's been 18 months. And I don't think we've had a long you know, it's, so, it's, yeah, I, I'm going I'm to say same thing in the utility resolution board. There's been so, it's so air varying frequent, so unless, it, it, and, and a couple of the other board things, there's just not a whole lot coming towards you us. You have a collegial community. There are moments, but by and large, people tend to respect one another. Yeah. And I think that you can make the assumption it will continue to do that way. So are we voting on uh, what I have written? Yes. yes. And, and what you are but, suggesting will Come but we yes. have to you open know, the public hearing. Yes. We're only voting on what you have. Yes. yes. Right. And then we'll be done with it. Okay. A through L. Okay. So, yes. you, okay. open the public hearing on the suggested changes to 1262.08, adding sections E7. I'll close the public hearing on 1262.08. And so, would you like to make a motion to accept the changes? I make a motion to accept the changes under 1262.08 E7. I'll second that. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. And so I will come back with additional. No. No, no, no. 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 We're going to monitor the no. situation. We're going to monitor the situation oh, okay. and, if necessary, develop a uh, mechanism for so the possible well, Thank you for bringing that. Yeah. So, okay, so no, so no, no, no you felt like there need to be any caps or anything like that right now. No. Okay. But I think, I think okay. all of us, and I think we're probably already doing it, is you know, uh, maybe on, on, your, on your electronic device, as you think of things that you think you might be handy to have part of, the language of this, write it down. I'd certainly be doing that. Because some of it just isn't easy. Because, you know, I think of something and say, why have you been doing that? And I think of it with me. Right? All right, so we have done the new business. We've done the agenda planning. So we're ready to. So just to. So Denise. We talked about uh, 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 scheduling. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, I'm sorry. So, Denise, you are going to make a report to council with the recommendations. We've got no council rep. So, you will do that. Please. Yeah, well, we have to first have these put in an ordinance form. I, I don't, sure. Yeah, I usually do, we'll do that sometime in July. It won't be the next June meeting, but it'll be July, hopefully. July 3rd? Maybe? Was that the next meeting? Yeah. yeah. Is. Or, no. Third. Yeah. So you first. 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 Okay. Four, three, two, second. I can't wait to see these minutes. So. Just a second. I'll show up first. Okay. So, so my first. Okay. So. Um, Early ordinances on these. Do you guys yes. do, do you still have the ordinances on these? I, I don't know. If they're. I think you pretty much got them. They're just the underlying. That's what feel on the place. All right, feel on the place. Okay. I think all the think when you've got a free exhibit A for reviewing. Uh, I'm sure I have a thousand of them from before. But you did not just went through it again? Yes. All right. Okay. Uh, I move we adjourn the meeting. I second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Great. 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 Great.